Glad you could join me today. I am in the book of Nehemiah. Now, if you remember the story of Nehemiah in uh, the first chapter, Nehemiah gets word he is a servant of the king of Persia at the time. And he gets word that the walls of Jerusalem have been broken down and the people are in disarray. And so he goes back after uh, appealing to the king and he goes back to Jerusalem and for a few years there he becomes the governor of that particular state and that particular region. And in the process he rebuilds the walls. Well, he was uh, confronted with various kinds of opposition in various forms in various ways. And these people who sought to uh, undermine the work of rebuilding the walls that he was doing did so in a variety of different ways. They, uh, they laughed at him, they mocked him. In our chapter today, in chapter 6, they uh, tried to distract him and, uh, and create some kinds of diversion so that they might accuse him. They made false statements about him in order to do um, uh, various different different things that would slow down the work of the of the rebuilding of the walls, and so one of one of the things that I find interesting here in uh, chapter six, beginning with verse thirteen to the end of the chapter, four times Nehemiah records that the purpose of these obstacles that these people were throwing in at him was to make him afraid, to cause him to fear. And I, and I recognize that that's the tactic that the enemy of our souls would use on us today also. He calls us to fear. We are called upon in this generation to fear a virus that, we, that God says we don't need to fear. We're called upon to fear a government that we're not supposed to fear. We're supposed to recognize that they have a certain authority that comes from God, but that authority is vested in the Constitution, not in the individual whims of, of the various different leaders. And so, so fear is a tactic that the enemy uses in order to destroy us and to dissuade us and to turn us away from the truth. And that tactic of fear is being propagated very much in our generation. One of the, one of the things that the enemy does, and this, this spans all generations to be sure, but one of the fear tactics that he has is, will God really provide for me? Jesus said that the, uh, that, that, that the Father provides for the lilies of the field and the sparrows in the field. And he is one who cares for them, and he cares for you and me more. But we don't often believe that. Oftentimes, instead, we worry about where the next meal will come from. Now, maybe we're set well enough that we don't have to worry about the next meal, but we wonder about retirement, or we wonder about, will my money last until, uh, until I die, and what's going to happen after that, and we worry about those things because the enemy has put into our hearts fear rather than trust. Later on in the New Testament, the scripture will tell us that there is no love in, uh, or excuse me, that, that, uh, that, that fear is the antithesis of love, that we don't need to fear because we have loved him. And he loves us. And so we don't need to fear these things. We need to fear God rather than the things that are uh, in this world. And so this fear tactic, though, I, I want to point out, especially in our day and this generation, because this fear tactic is the ploy of the enemy of our souls. Let me say that again. It's the ploy of the enemy of our souls. If you know Jesus, if you're walking with him, you don't need to fear. Psalm 91 says you will not fear the pestilence. 
It says, no plague will come near your tent. It says, he will deliver you from the deadly pestilence. All of those promises are contained just in a few verses in Psalm 91. And yet, we're bombarded on the, on the evening news and in the newspapers and in the media with fear, fear, fear. But we don't need to fear the virus. We don't need to fear uh, a retirement in which we don't have any money. We don't have to fear anything except God. That's what he tells us to fear, and that's what we should fear. And so I encourage you, and I invite you, to put aside fear and say, Lord, I, I trust you, and actively say, I trust you in the midst of this that the enemy wants me to fear. He wants us to be people of faith and trust, not fear. Father, I ask you to help us to be faithful to you. Teach us who we should fear, what we should fear. Show us the things that are right and proper for us to fear. And deliver us from those things that would be imposed upon us through fear. And so I thank you, Father, for this example in Nehemiah. And I pray that we will be faithful to you as he was. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Hope you have a great day.